uh, Roblox, whatever that is. All right, Dougie Fisher, we're, we're live here at the Santa Monica track at the heat wave. There's uh, JP. There's uh, Coach Dave with, uh, with a nice uh, Triple G gear. Ready. Thanks to you. We got the, um, here's the, uh, I don't know if people can tell how hot it is, but we got a, we got a pretty hot uh, heat wave. There's a uh, Renzo ball <laughs> walking on the, uh, on the track. And uh, you, you, you see what he gave me, Tom? Wanna, you wait, see wait. what Lorenzo gave me? What do you get? Look at that. Is he trying oh, to tell nice. me something? Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? I think that was meant when you were running all over the track. Hey, I'm still, I'm still repping HBO. <laughs> yeah. HBO Boxing. Yeah, we need to get I, get, I get emails from folks saying, is, is HBO Boxing done? Are they finished? And I say, well, they got a pretty good September. They got a pretty good. Uh, <laughs> They're still in this. I mean, they, got, they got the Superfly card, which is this Saturday at StubHub Center. That's the best triple header that HBO or any other cable subscription basic otherwise has showcased long in recent time. memory. I yeah, can't think of a better time. triple yeah. header, really. And yeah. there have been some good triple headers. Uh, and then, of course, on pay-per-view the next week, they've got Canelo Triple G. And then on <coughs> September 23rd at the Forum in my hometown of Inglewood, they have the return of Jorge Linares, the lightweight champ. Fighting an Olympic gold medalist, so fighting uh, Luke Campbell with uh, Luke Eddie, Campbell. Eddie Hearn. Yeah, and that, I think uh, Luke Campbell's very—I uh, don't know if he's underrated, but he's just not that well known over here. But that's going to be a tough fight. It's a good fight. That's it's quality. Fight, yeah. He's an Olympic mm -hmm. gold medalist, yeah. folks. He's very yeah. tall, very rangy. He's just got one loss, and everyone jumped off his bandwagon because he suffered one close loss. Come on, folks. It's—it's it's a good fight. Someone asked uh, who's going to win between uh, Monroe and uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Ooh, tough call. That's that's the see that's the same kind of scenarios we had in Chihuahua, Mexico, yeah. with with Antonio Margarito and Carson Jones. I would bet, like I, I told somebody, I would bet Carson if I was a betting man, if it was in a, in a neutral right. area. But it's not. You can't bet. Well, I, didn't I, I don't think you could bet. You couldn't bet Carson, and you, you, I don't think you could bet uh, Willie Monroe Jr. He doesn't bring the eraser with his fists, yeah. and he's on Billy Joe Saunders' turf. Yeah. And Billy Joe Saunders is a bigger I think when, I think when Saunders is there. motivated and he, when he's in shape, yes, he can he's be a, good a solid fighter. fighter. He had some good wins. I've seen um, some footage of him training, Tom, and he's, he's, he's yeah. on track to make weight, and he's, he's got his speed and his fluidity. So he's taking Monroe seriously. So I think Smelody Saunders says, at his best. Uh, yeah. Canelo Golovkin is not on a neutral area. <laughs> That's okay. Well, uh, that's, I mean, that's a good point. We're aware listen, of that, though. We're listen, uh, his, it, yeah, Triple Las G. Vegas is not fair. We got the eraser. <laughs> yeah, Triple G yeah. brings his neutralizing fish. Yeah, yes, he brings, yeah, he wanna, brings his own judges. You want to take over? And, uh, but yeah, I mean, listen, I, I if I was Triple G, my, I would be worried about new, it going uh, the distance. Jordan brand shirt. Big brand drama new, show. There it is. New Triple G collection. And you know what, Tom? On your phone, I can see the detail. I can see the the Kaz <laughs> There we go. Okay. Now, would I say oh, Kazakh I'll flag or Kazakhstani flag. flag, or would I say Kazakh the Kazakhstan flag? We should let everyone Kazakh know flag. where it's available yeah. and when, right? Because we got to redo it. So it's okay. Available. Hey, Danny McDonald, eighty-eight, <laughs> keeps asking this. Tom, will Triple G fight Canelo the way he fought David Lemieux? He's obsessed with this. You have to answer. I'll answer it. You answer it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly the same way. Yeah. That I mean, would be smart. Is... Exactly. Dave, I you mean... get, Dave, you're giving away the whole game plan. <laughs> 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 no, it, it really, uh, I think Canelo is a terrific counterpuncher. Um, I think he's faster than Lemieux. I, I would say Lemieux, <laughs> with his uh, power, is uh, probably has the edge on the power. And uh, you see I how doubt it, Mr. Boxing Guru. <laughs> This guy asked if they make those shirts in his size. He's a big dude. I've seen him. <laughs> I seriously doubt it. But, um, but uh, anyway, for the shirts, they're going to be at the Nike store in Vegas, and they're going to be uh, online, uh, Nike.com, I think after the 6th or after the 8th, right before Superfly hits on, on the 9th. Okay. So you guys are in up. Vegas for the fight. No, that's a good-looking shirt. I like How it. How much do they sell for? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. I don't know what the uh, the retail price is yet. Yeah, this is just all a brand new process with uh, with Jordan. So we we've been pushing them for two years as <laughs> fans have been pushing me. So uh, they finally, with the Canelo fight, they came out with a new collection. This they is the right hoodie. time. They got a hoodie. They oh, got uh, two of these shirts in black and uh, two different ones in white and uh, awesome. and two different caps. So it's a nice. Uh, it's a, it's a nice collection. So how did you put that together? Um, that I know was hard a, that was work. a lot of hard work yeah. and a lot of persistence on, on that one. Uh, I think they just recognized that uh, Gennady stood for the same values as, uh, as the brand does. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're really more into team sports like NBA, obviously. And, uh, What's up, Bernie? And NFL and uh, Bernie joined and, us. Uh, baseball, but uh, they saw the international potential with, with the Gennady, especially 
uh, with his uh, grandfather being from Korea, actually the Kazakh market that uh, you know they want to expand in. Uh, Kazakhstan has uh, 17 million people that are huge Triple G fans. So anything that Triple G wears or represents, it's like it becomes uh, overnight sensation. So, I mean, Jordan is obviously popular worldwide, but that just uh, with the Triple G line, I think it'll uh, take it to a whole different level. Now, Bernie asks, what about the Ring Magazine Super Flyweight belt? Get it out of mothballs. <laughs> Put it on. The, I think it is on the line. I because it, no, it's vacant. It's vacant it's now, vacant. but I mean, talk but to, but but uh, our editor Michael uh, Rosenthal over there to see, oh, really? uh, see what's going on because uh, oh, I know why. It's because of Inouye. Anyway. That's right. I was thinking maybe this rematch it would be on the yeah, line. They will make a special uh, petition uh, for that. So yeah. That, uh, challenge for the future. I but, think there's going to be kind of a round robin at 115 yeah. pounds. I mean, look at this, this card That's here as with, quality as some of the, with, the great uh, welterweight round robins. You shouldn't even say six fighters. It's going to be seven fighters. Uh, Brian Valoria yep. is on the undercard. He's a fan favorite here in, in uh, LA. He bought a, a ton of tickets. We, uh, we have a lot of people uh, coming to see Brian. Brian's popular. Uh, Quadras and uh, Estrada. That taps into the Mexican two, market. Two of the top, uh, you know, top, top five. And that's uh, an even money fight, too. Uh, I can't pick a winner in that fight. Fight. Honestly, I can't. Yeah, I think if Quadras, uh, with his speed, might be able to outbox uh, Estrada, but uh, Estrada gave uh, Chocotito a very tough fight yes. when, when they fought, so that, that's a very even fight. And you got Inouye. A lot of people, a lot of the Japanese fans especially, are looking forward to seeing the debut of Inouye over here in the United States. He's that... Uh, He's that uh, kind of Triple G internet sensation. Right. You know, that uh, you hear about him, now you want to see him, yeah. Yeah, so this will be the first time he's fought here in the U.S., first time on HBO. He's fighting a very tough guy out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Antonio Nieves. Yeah, he's solid. Uh, very solid. He's, he's uh, you know, training very hard and, and looking to, and it's a huge stage for him. Looking when a guy like Nieves can get on, uh, on the HBO platform, he's 100% uh, motivated for the WBO title. And then we got, uh, the, as the main event, the, the rematch of one of the best fights of the year, Rungvisai versus uh, Chaco Tito. Uh, Rungvisai has become a, a national hero in Thailand, and Chaco Tito wants to get his, uh, his title back. So I think you know, both those guys are just going to be at the, at the peak of their skills. And uh, bring out their their fan bases. So we're gonna have a big. Now you mix, can't diss this card. Big mix of fans. You can and diss, yeah, you can't don't forget. You... Triple G is actually. I don't know if we officially announced that yet. I was gonna put it on Twitter later today or tomorrow. But I always give you the scoops. Triple oh, G course. is gonna you be better. in the house uh, at StubHub. He's <laughs> oh, gonna, get out of here! Come back. Oh my to God! Where he broke the attendance <clears throat> record at StubHub. He set the attendance record, and now. Uh, that was really that kind was, of the launch pad for Triple G Mania in Mexican yeah, style. That was full capacity. We couldn't get more people in there with the fire marshal. We had bleachers. We had standing room seats. We had, uh, we were, uh, I think, uh, uh, a little over 9,000 people for that, for the StubHub. That so time. are there tickets left for Superfly? There are some tickets left. The $30 tickets are sold out. But uh, we just released some more of the uh, great Loge uh, locations, the $150 tickets. There's $100 tickets and $60 tickets. And right. the StubHub, you know, there's no bad seats. So we made, we definitely this priced is it, it folks. very affordably and uh, made a big push uh, here the last week. It'll be a full house and, uh, you know. Under it's going to be a great uh, under environment, the California too. skies like this, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be a tremendous atmosphere on Saturday. Yeah, bring a jacket, folks. It's And, and, and like a big kind of hat to cover your face yeah, from the I sun. The, uh, it's going to be 80. Which, is, which oh, okay. is comfortable. The heat wave will be over, maybe. Heat wave yeah. will be over, but then it's gonna—it's only gonna get down to 70, so it's not gonna get cold at night like sometimes it does in uh, in, in Carson. So okay. it, should be, it should be pretty. This guy uh, Danny McDonald has a lot of questions for you. They're but good there ones. There will be a lot of cerveza there by uh, Takati. Okay, it's good. You got it. Yeah. Uh, top sponsor Shivas is a, is a, one of the sponsors of the show. Cafe Agave is a new sponsor for boxing. So, yeah. Uh, Make sure there's lots of beverage. And people drink beverage. lots of water, too. we got to figure out something for all the fans that love to tailgate at the, at the stub. And how about uh, get in there? How should they drive? How should they drive? Safe. Like they just won the lottery. <laughs> I mean, just take it easy. Like you want to live forever. Come on. Give yourself time and then take your time. Yep. So um, people are writing and asking about the release date. After the 6th, guys. After the 6th. Yeah, after the 6th. Yeah. Yeah, uh, wants either to September 6th is the earliest most likely around the 8th or so, but uh, definitely uh, it's supposed to be before the Super Bowl. Nike.com or Nike Store in Vegas. That's your answer, guys. Oh, will there be Triple G merchandise at the Superfly show? Yes, there will. There uh, will be. Uh, we're Moe's Triple Fire. Triple G is yes. coming to the fight, Good and question. we're going to be selling Triple G merchandise uh, awesome. uh, there at the Superfly show. So um, we're trying to accommodate uh, all the uh, all the, the boxing fans for, the, for that show. Do you remember the first Ahmed, time? Ahmed, yes. Triple G will be at Superfly. Mm -hmm. Canelo? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, 
Africa. You know, like, <laughs> but you never know, you know, if you see some no. guy with red hair and a beard, you know, with a <laughs> hoodie, kind of scoping out. Oh yeah, he uh, might be there. Fake Canelo might be there. Yeah. Hey, is Canelo going to get the same hairstylist he got for the Mayweather fight? No, that that I, would I jinx knew everything. That was the kiss of death for him. I don't remember that. Come on, he was he 22. He went crazy with his hair. You know, went fancy. Tom, don't listen to Dave. Dave's a, <laughs> Dave's a Canelo hater. He's a Canelo well, hater. Maybe, maybe we'll true. send the barber over. Dis and Canelo. Look at this. <laughs> there you go. Hey, but my man. Triple G doesn't need that my help. My man that I love did the same thing. That's Algeri when he fought Pacquiao. Oh. He had his air stylist. Yeah. Then you knew it was over. Well. That is, that's when you know. It's like. Yeah. No, I knew it was over then. Yeah. Triple G's easy with his hair. He just uh, he gets it trimmed up. Shout out to Fernie the barber who was out there by, uh, I think, uh, uh, by Riverside area. He went out. He actually drove up. They drive up to camp now and, and get everyone at the same time. So. so, Tom, you've also got another fighter that's in action on uh, September 9. That's the WBO cruiserweight champ, Oleksandr Usyk. Yeah. And yeah. he's fighting the former champ, Marco Hook. Is that how you say it? Hook. Or Huck. Marco, Marco Huck. Yeah. Huck. Marco Huck. Uh, in Germany, where Hook is pretty big, as yeah, you know. Yeah, he's popular. Yeah, that, that fight wound, wound up in uh, Berlin. Uh, look, Usyk's the type of guy, just like with Triple G, he'll go anywhere to yeah, fight. That's he, true. He won his title. Well, first he won the gold medal in, in the London Olympics. Then he won, he broke Evander's uh, record. He, he uh, won the WBO title. In uh, Poland, fighting an undefeated in, Polish in fighter. Poland against the guy that knocked out Hook, and now he's fighting Hook in, uh, in Germany. But uh, he's been on HBO twice so far. Usyk, and uh, if he wins the tournament, um, we expect him to to uh, come back onto HBO and just take uh, just uh, continue that momentum that he has. And Bernie uh, reminds us that Mike Perez, who's also a K2 fighter, is also in the tournament. Mike so. Perez is uh, on the show. He's uh, that's uh, that's Irish, interesting. Uh, Irish Mike Perez. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> the rebel, right? He's he's been on HBO a few times. And interesting I think to see at, how he does at, at 200 at pounds. 200 pounds yeah. is a completely different uh, proposition than fighting. A guy like Povetkin at 240 pounds in Moscow. So uh, I think Mike uh, Mike could actually be the dark horse of that, I think he uh, is. Uh, I'm on record tournament. with that, as a matter of yeah, fact. I, I put that in a mailbag. Really, he could really do some great things. Uh, you know, Abel has uh, Murat Gassiev uh, training up there in uh, in Big Bear. He's Murat, one of the favorites, uh, along with Usyk. And, and the, the, Usyk, to me, is the, the right favorite. Or uh, Usyk and Gassiev to fight each other in the, in the final. But... You never know on this type of tournament. You never know with so many uh, talented fighters, and uh, you got to give those guys credit for putting that. Uh, putting that What's together. up with uh, Breakhouse, Cecilia Breakhouse? Cecilia Breakhouse is she supposed the only she's, undisputed she's champ now, again? Right. She, she, she she's did have only, some company for like one week ESPN, uh, with Terrence Crawford. Uh, ESPN <laughs> slipped up on that one. ESPN, I was disappointed with them. They're so pro female uh, athletics and uh, female uh, athletes, and then they totally uh, spaced out. Uh, it might have been Teddy Atlas who doesn't have Triple G. There you uh, go. That's, that's a Teddy thing. <laughs> somehow they uh, spaced out. Uh, Teddy doesn't seem to follow the European uh, uh, champions uh, so closely. but. Uh uh, so well, he's so got Loma. Loma, his guy, so he figured he's got all of Europe covered with so that, that, that's the, being a Loma uh, that's booster. Reasoning, yeah. But uh, no, it's Cecilia though. is supposed to fight uh, <laughs> sometime in, uh, in uh, late October uh, back in Norway. She's uh, wildly popular in Norway. You know, sells out arenas. And last time she was in open we air. Gotta, we got to talk to you about getting those those breakhouse fights streamed live we'll figure, over uh, here. We'll figure something Let's out. figure something out. Yeah. You know what? Fox out. Sports has been playing her last fight on replay. And I think it's Fox Sports, and the atmosphere is incredible. Teddy Atlas she's, is boxing. Yeah. She's a huge star in Norway. <laughs> okay, dude. I mean, it's incredible when she fights in Norway. And we saw her last fight live. Right. You and I saw it on yeah. a stream from um, Argentina yeah, because oh, Barry Argentina, is the, right. from Argentina. Yeah. So TYC. And uh, don't forget on Superfly, we'll go back to that. Sinisa Estrada is a local fan favorite. She's oh, she's on, on it. Show. Yeah. I, I look at her as a, a, a future opponent for Marlon. Sure. Is it Marlon Esparza? Esparza? Yeah, right. I think. Uh, yeah, the, the Olympian similar, signed a Golden Boy. Similar uh, weight class. Uh, yeah. Ruslan Madayev, who also trains with uh, Abel up there, he's fighting a very tough guy. I forgot the guy's name, but he's like 22 and three. And uh, Ruslan has like. Uh, this is I the think, Superfly undercard. That's the Superfly undercard. Is, yeah. are, are, are there going to be any that's streams for that? Uh, that one we're going to work on too. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, that would be uh, we'll great. Yeah, if the, yeah. If, the, if the if the undercard fights are quality. Yeah, if not, we're going to have you there with the periscope. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the you Just tell the security guards that, is, is that Abel, I'm cleared. Is Abel always cool? Uh, Abel is uh, cool as a cucumber under pressure. I've never seen him lose his cool. He's uh, well, especially preparing for a fight. You know, is, you know, 
he's a consummate professional. Yeah. He's always, he has all of his things organized, everything's so meticulous. He this ain't his plan. first rodeo. You know, it's just uh, by the time they get to the arena and then, how they, you know, I mean, you saw, I think McGregor, they, they forgot their cup in, yeah. uh, in the hotel room, which Jeez. was, uh, I just, I watched the replay. Uh, Jesus Christ. On, uh, on Showtime. And, uh, you know, that might have been staged. I don't think so. Might. No, the way, no, the way Come that on. Mayweather had Everything was scripted. Him. You know, Everything of that fight was scripted, that would people. Happen. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know, we... You don't I, know what was staged <laughs> or not. But. Well, the, no, the whole... <laughs> hey, they did a, a few things. I'll tell you what, they did a great job. No, they did. They, they yeah. did a great job. It was, a, it was entertainment, and that's what the fans yeah. uh, wanted. I mean, they paid the, the... A lot of fans that bought it on pay-per-view, they paid $100. And so happy. you got to give credit to both... Uh, look, Floyd and uh, Connor, they're both uh, marketing geniuses. And uh, to put that fight together... Um, you know, the box, a lot of boxing purists, you know, they, they don't think it should be counted as an actual win in boxing. But, you know, certainly, just like yes. Ali and Newton and Oki, you know, that was, uh, that was uh, entertainment uh, of uh, two different uh, fighting genres. And uh, I think uh, Connor, whether Floyd allowed him or not. Uh, that Connor, dude's badass right there. Yeah, I ain't joking around. Well, I, I Connor uh, made a great account of himself. And he can really talk. Yeah. I, was oh, watching, yeah. I watched yeah. the replay last night. And um, he's good. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He can market himself. And, and the thing with Connor, a lot of guys are just talking. Somebody asked if uh, next year we'll get uh, Connor McGregor versus Triple G. <laughs> we well, would now that it. he has one professional that's fight, a, now he, JP, he might be qualified. That is, that is a death yeah. match. You can't even set straight odds up, for that. That's straight up Yeah, he set the over under one and a half rounds. Well, no, but yeah. McGregor would do that fight. But Connor probably would do that fight. Yeah, uh, fight anybody. And you should yeah. do that fight, too. I mean, but that's if you look like, at uh, like some... Doing good, how are you? But if you look at uh, that's that's balls down. Lonzo Ball's father. Yeah, uh, I appreciate the teacher. If you look at uh, what the things, what the people, uh, uh, what, what Connor does, you know, a lot of people say, you know, he talks nonsense. But if you really break down, I mean, he's a he's a marketing genius. I mean, what he's accomplished, you know, he's not an undefeated fighter, but people just like to see him. Like no, no, he's a, he's a competitor, like and he's a showman. Run. There's no doubt about and that. What he did with uh, Nate Diaz. You know, he went up, what, 25 pounds and fought yeah. uh, Diaz on short notice. And yeah. Then, uh, and then did the rematch with him, and then yeah. beat him in the rematch. So, yeah. You know, and then the, his win over Aldo. No, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what he should do, honestly, is the rubber match with Nate Diaz. I mean, I, I don't care yeah, to see yeah. him fight Bob. I mean, that's up to uh, Dana. But that's just me. That's just me. But supposedly he's coming back, I think, in December to his natural environment in the cage. But... Yeah, I mean, now that he went 10 rounds with, uh, you know, one of the best fighters uh, in, in the history of uh, boxing, you know, maybe he's qualified <laughs> for uh, for another fight. But I, I think he's going to stick to the UFC. That, that's what my, every, everything that I get is uh, he's going to stick to the UFC. Somebody asked earlier, uh, he's asking a lot of questions, and he's got to be from the UK because he was asking you if you know about uh, Luke Campbell and, and so forth. Sure, I don't know about Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell, like I said, is a... Uh, I think he, he he's not that well known over here, but he's a very tough competitor. I think. Uh, you think uh, Jorge Linares has his hands full on Jorge September twenty third. Uh, uh, Jorge's a great fighter, but you never know. Uh, you know, one of these uh, younger guys coming up uh, could catch him on the right yeah, day. Yeah, you pull him into a grueling fight, the yeah. face comes apart. He yeah. doesn't have a, a world class chin, so anything can happen. But yeah, Campbell was an Olympic gold medalist. He's a, he's a good boxer. He's got good body size. Puncher. Body puncher. Eddie, uh, good body puncher. Good You're body right puncher. about that, J yeah. JP. does his homework. Yeah, What's Anybody the price who? Of that fight? Yeah. Uh, Linares is a three to one favorite. Not overwhelming yeah. favorite. Not overwhelming favorite, three to one. I know who you're uh, picking. Right now, Linares, but I could change my mind. I, I want to see how they look. He's a good fighter, Luke Campbell. I thought that he actually came back and beat Mendy in that fight. He got up from a knockdown. And yeah, Mendy's the one guy who beat him. That's when yeah, everybody in the UK jumped off the bandwagon, which I close. think is ridiculous. It was yeah. very close, and Mendy got a split, but what was very telling about the fight is that Mendy never has wanted the rematch. They've tried and tried. And Mendy. There you Remember go. Remember we saw Linares get knocked out with the staples? Yeah, against DeMarco. That broke my heart. Yeah, that was yeah, terrible. Was yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, terrible. rocking my old margarito tea design from Red Corner of, uh, oh, yeah, Apparel. Yeah, can y'all see that? That is this is Antonio Margachito. <laughs> so you guys can let's see, watch Usyk fight in the afternoon, drive safely to StubHub on Saturday night, and see the great card of the year on the ninth, the flyweights. Do you want to talk about the odds? It's yeah. even money for Estrada and Quadras. The new way. Who are you picking? Oh, that's a tough call. I can't. I can't call. I can't it. call that fight. 
It's um, a new way is a 15 to 1 favorite, which you would expect, but that's only because people don't know Nieves. And there's that's a, too big, but well, that's, it, that's too wide. But you got to understand how odds makers do it. It's it's a cult following thing. Yeah. A new way. They have to set him a big favorite because he's like the thing. Plus right. His first, his first fight uh, out, outside of right. Japan. Right. Yeah. yeah. And not fighters, everybody travels well. A lot of well known right. American fighters don't travel outside the country. And, yeah. uh, and there's a reason. You know, when, when you leave your safety zone, your environment, and your you go routine. internationally, yeah. it's a whole different thing. It's different food. It's different different hotels, yeah. it's different restaurants, you know, That's the, right. the gym, different, everything is different. So, different yeah. judges. So, so I'm rooting yeah. for a new way, but I wouldn't lay that price. But in the main event, La Ravancha, the revenge, Chocolatito is maybe surprising to some. He's about a three to one favorite, but surprising to me. it's surprising, but I'm taking it because I think yeah. he's going to win this fight. Because he's a great I fighter. I think That's he's why. a great fighter This and he's going to win this fight, but it is surprising because he did get beaten the first fight. But uh, he opened actually around two to one, and he's been bet up a little bit the last day or so to three to one. So those are the odds for Saturday night. But it is going to be incredible. The atmosphere, incredible. Tom, do you rate, or how do you rate uh, Chris Eubank Jr.? Somebody just asked that. This is the same UK fan. Look, uh, Chris Eubank uh, again. Uh, you know, I, I, I met his father uh, when we. I was over there actually for the uh, for the uh, Dillian White fight against uh, Anthony Joshua. And, uh, and I saw him, he was staying at the same hotel that we were, and, and uh, I saw him in the lobby, and he's, he's a pretty entertaining guy. He's interesting, talk, isn't he? He's, he's pretty entertaining, and with the marketing job he's done with his son, and, and uh, I think uh, uh, Eubank Jr., I think Chris Jr. is uh, uh, just you know, kind of coming into his own now. I mean, he, uh, he lost to Saunders, but I think uh, he's got that uh, you know, potential where he could really take over that division. He's in that- uh, The Super in, Series will let us know that, that will it. answer our questions yeah, about you, Bank. I mean, that made Andre Ward's yeah, career. No, no absolutely. one really knew who, who Ward was before that. And then when he beat guys like uh, Froch or uh, Abraham, or, Nickel you know, Kessler, Kessler, all all in the U.S. But uh, he still he still got the victories over him. But that, that's the type of thing that uh, can propel your career. And Andre, after he won the Super Six, he was on top, you know, on top of boxing. And, and I think if Eubank could uh, could win, then uh, that propels his career. If you could promote one fighter from the UK, not named Anthony Joshua, who would it be? Well, that's a qu question from, from much uh, earlier, and I think, from the UK. I, think, I think that's how he phrased it. Wow. Uh, that's a good question. There's so many talented guys. Uh, I like uh, Tony Bellew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony that, yeah. Bellew. Promoter's dream. That's he's a good a, choice. I like that. He's an entertaining guy. He's pulled out you know, some great victories recently. Yeah. I mean, the way he... Uh, the way he stood up. I mean, when I saw Tony against David Hay yeah. at the at the weigh-in, yeah. I texted Eddie. I'm like, "You sure? You sure you want to <laughs> yeah. do this fight?" I mean, it's just, boy. I mean, the way. Uh, I mean, Hay just looked so much bigger, and then the way Tony uh, took him apart. I mean, yeah. You know, arguably, I guess that uh, David had an injury, but I mean, you know, just showing the heart in there. And, uh, and but Bello had to, to stay talk. in there for that injury to occur. He's a yeah. likable guy. Yeah, he he's is. a marketable guy, and so uh, I think uh, he's the type of guy who will fight anyone also. So. Uh, that, that'll probably, I'd probably go with uh, Tony Bell, you know, I like that. That's a great choice. That's a great choice. Because yeah, yeah. right. uh, I know fans always ask about the weigh-ins. Can people go to the Superfly weigh-in the day before? Oh, yeah. oh that's a good point, JP. Yeah. Uh, we actually made it. Uh, it's going to be on the concourse okay. with concession stands open. It's going to be on the concourse uh, at StubHub, okay. open, open to the public, awesome. just like we did when uh, Triple G fought Rubio there. Cool. Um, it'll also be uh, uh, live streamed. Uh, it should be on the HBO uh, website. That's perfect. Uh, on the satellite, but uh, Good. yeah, we, we try to make these events as fan friendly as possible, and that way the fans can see, you know, with the odds maker, they can see him live on the scale, they can see their favorite fighter, and may, and have a much closer interaction with them. I remember when Triple G was walking to the scale uh, against Rubio, and he was signing autographs and taking photos. I think it was actually coming off the scale, but uh, mm -hmm. anyway, you get a much closer interaction at the weigh-ins than you do at fight night where you have all the security and you have to be so far away from the ring. So, yeah. so the fans really appreciate the uh, seeing their favorite fighters uh, live. So how are you going to control the crowd with Triple G at the fights next Saturday? <laughs> I remember the first time you took him there. It was right after he won, you know, had his first fight in yeah. New York. Yeah. And, you know, he was there and people came up to him, but it was no big deal. It was like, who's that guy? Yeah. So how are you going to control that? Because you know he's well, got a. If you remember, we took him then after that to the forum, and uh, he was just surrounded. We couldn't uh, we couldn't move him to a seat. He was surrounded by at every point. He was walking forward, surrounded by at least 20, 30 people, you know, just wanting his autograph. So 
We're going to have uh, a lot of security there, but I think the fans, look, uh, Triple G's a likable guy. He's got the big fight coming up with Canelo. The fans like to see him. Uh, they like to see the fact that he interacts with the fans as well. And, uh, you know, it, it'll, be a, it'll be a great homecoming for him where he, uh, like I said, he broke the uh, record at the, uh, at the Stubhub Center. Remember you took him to Montebello? Yeah, took him to Montebello, <laughs> yeah, to the Quiet Canyon, yeah. And James Tony was there. James Tony was there. Did they take yeah. a picture together? Yeah. I, I have a picture. Now that's yeah, great. That's 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 two badass middleweights right there. Yeah. No, James was a true, one of the most athletically gifted fighters I've ever seen, athletes that I've ever seen. And uh, I worked with James for about three or four fights, and uh, he was the most talented <laughs> on, out inside the ring, outside the ring. He was probably one of the most undisciplined, but he just... <laughs> He just won on his national ta natural talent. I mean, he was uh, he was a great football player. I think he was a uh, quarterback in high school. I mean, a lot of people uh, don't really under you know recognize his athletic uh, talents. But James, was, he, he uh, was a born boxer so though. He, he was a born fighter. fighter. Yeah. Who was his teacher? Bill Miller. Yeah. The, the late Fox. great Bill Miller. Fox Miller, yeah, from, That's right. uh, from Detroit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, legend, legendary people trainer. People are asking, how about the following week, Triple G Canelo way? Uh, that will be that will be at the MGM. That'll be at the MGM Grand Garden. Okay. That'll be indoors, so people don't have to bake in the uh, in the in the Vegas heat. Hopefully, by the end of the week, when we when we do the Superfly weigh-in, uh, the heat wave. Uh, they're, yeah, they're it's projecting. supposed to come down uh, yeah, Wednesday. They're projecting about oh, it's uh, over 80, tomorrow. 81. Tomorrow it's over. Okay. okay. So it'll Good. be comfortable for everyone. And that fans wants can to go, go to that. Yeah, yeah. For for Superfly and for the uh, MGM weigh-in. Yeah, there you absolutely. Go, guys. Yeah. When are you going to Vegas? Uh, we're going to fly up uh, Monday evening. He's, he's going to, oh, that's what I'm thing. going. See, I'm breaking all the news here before all the press releases come out, Fred. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're they're going to not be happy with me, all the publicists. But yeah. uh, he's he's throwing out the first pitch at the Dodger, all the Dodger fans, he's throwing out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium. I think this is now the third the third time he's doing it. Um, September 10th, the day after Super September Fly. September 10th, okay, he's gonna Sunday. Fly, uh, Sunday, September right 10th. On. I think they're playing uh, playing the Rockies, I believe. All right. On. Um, all right. But uh, he's going to throw out the first pitch September 10th, um, so all the fans can see him there. They can interact with him at Dodger Stadium, and then uh, and then we're going to fly to Vegas on on Monday. And then the grand arrival is Tuesday at the uh, MGM. Uh, uh, and that will be streamed lobby. live on RingTV.com, yeah. as will yeah, the I'll final look. press conference, as will the fighter workouts, <laughs> as will the uh, the undercard press conference, and of course the weigh-in. The weigh-in show is going to be huge. Our friends at Ring TV have been very supportive. They did. Uh, they produced their own show, uh, Mano a Mano, with uh, Abel Sanchez. That's coming out. And uh, Eddie Reynoso. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I was supposed to leak that one or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it should know, be. That, that, I don't know if it's out I yet. I think they're finishing it. <laughs> but, uh, but they, had a nice, they have a long weekend to work on that. that. I think be, they've been uh, grinding. Coming out next week. But that's, oh, uh, yeah, no, definitely next week. It's like a face off between the two. I mean, there's so many different facets to, to the level of uh, how high of a uh, world class fight this is between. Canelo and Triple G, and then the two trainers facing off against each other. Yeah, that was a good thing. The so stare down that uh, uh, Beto Duran hosted, he did yeah. he did a really good job, and it was great to see how much respect both trainers have for each other and for their fighters. Um, here's a qu question that keeps popping up: right. Will the winner of Canelo Triple G fight the winner of Saunders Monroe? Well, it's been Triple G's dream to unify all the titles to become undisputed champion. We tried to do it. Uh, we actually tried to do it last year. When uh, we did the uh, the Kell Brook fight, we tried to do the fight with uh, first. We tried to do with Canelo. Then we tried to do the unification fight with uh, Saunders. With Saunders. Then we tried to do it with Eubank Jr. But um, we tried to unify. Can it still Gennady's dream? You know, depending on who wins. For some um, reason, 2016, nobody wanted to fight Triple G. <laughs> it was like they needed one more year. They're was, like, you know what? When he turns 35, it was, it's uh, on. Okay, and it now was, it was a curse. I mean, yeah, I, I was trying to get everyone, and and we were paying record something about ratings. looking at his, uh, at his name and 34 years of age was just really terrifying. It wasn't know? like 35. Okay, let's do it. Come on. Yeah. It wasn't like we were, uh, <laughs> you know, underpricing it. We we were. No, you were. You guys were offering record, record money for everybody. Record yeah. money. About, I mean, career paydays for for all these guys, and, yep. and none of them uh, accepted it. But but, yeah. you know, now the Canelo fight is happening, and, uh, um, you know, he, he sold out the O2 arena against Kell Brook, then he uh, beat Danny Jacobs at another sold-out MSG. Yeah. Now uh, now he's fighting uh, Canelo, and this is arguably, you know, the two... Here's the unique thing, Doug, and, and, and Dave, you'll, you'll uh, I'm sure, agree with this as well. It's very rare. Sometimes you'll get two of the best fighters in the Danny, sport. I don't think those were bad performances either, but, yeah, you're right. 
but you'll get two great fighters in the sport, but these two are also two of the most marketable fighters yeah. in the sport. A lot of times that doesn't go hand in hand. Right. Where, uh, you know, one time uh, one of the fighters has to carry a promotion, but, uh, you know, these two fan bases, you know, Gennady's got a huge fan base, yeah. Canelo. They both have dedicated fans. Fan base, and, and, uh, and a lot of international fans are, are coming in for this. This is really more than a boxing match. This is an international sporting event, and, and that's what, uh, I think that's what the fans have been looking forward to at the highest level of the sport of boxing. And, and uh, you know, Gennady's risking all of his titles. Oh, but to get back to the undisputed thing, I mean, you saw Terrence Crawford just, uh, you know, unified uh, all the titles. And then he, uh, had to junior vacate, uh, yeah. he had to vacate the IBF title. I mean, sometimes, unfortunately, sanctioning bodies put pressure on you when you're at a certain level, and then you have to fight. Uh, you know, mandatory. It's very hard to hold we took a lot more of than heat. two belts. We took a lot of heat for the weight fight, but the IBF made it clear after he after he knocked out Lemieux, if you don't defend the IBF title against the mandatory, who was Toriano Johnson, then Johnson got injured, and that they didn't care about that. They're like, okay, the next highest guy is Wade. Yeah. And if if a guy didn't fight Wade, he would have gotten stripped. And yeah. So what's the point of just winning the title and then uh, giving it up? So no, it's become defended. it's become as long as hard. as long as you fight often. And if you're like Triple G, and you could yeah. you could pack an arena like the Forum, because wasn't the Forum sold out for Wade? Forum was sold out for Wade. It's freaking um, sold out for Dominic yeah. Wade. Yep. And, Come uh, on. You got Anthony Joshua has the same problem now. He's got to fight uh, Pulev as his mandatory, yeah. then WA is a mandatory. Yeah. So you know, it's, I'm okay with that. So uh, you know, just don't make that your only fight. You know, if you got to fight a mandatory, right. that, that that's people, the problem. The guys yeah. that only fight once a year, then then becomes right. a problem. You know, Gennady, you know, fights typically three times. You know, if he's successful against Canelo, we're gonna try to sneak in uh, another fight by the end of the year. Like December? Uh, yeah, by December. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, everyone's focused on Canelo. Everyone knows yeah. if he doesn't beat Canelo, then there's there's no nothing that's right. plan, uh you know, in the future. So we're, we're uh, looking forward to uh, September 16th at T-Mobile. All right, Tom. Hey, I appreciate you taking this hey, time yeah. out and, and letting us use your phone yeah, and your Periscope gotta, account where we get a lot more out. viewers. I think it was the clouds. I think when the sun came out now that... Uh, yeah, it, but the sun is out now and we're like yeah. literally, we're probably going to pass out. It's, yeah, it's, it's uh, getting you know, hot. But your phone is held out, man. It it's getting hot. I think yeah. it's the heat from it's, Superfly yes. coming up. It's less than a week now. So that's why everything is heating up. Get the stuff up Saturday night. There's heat from Superfly and there's heat from September 16, because yeah. the next two weeks, it's just a boxing fan's dream. It yeah, really uh, is. Yeah, I mean, really, all of September is a, is a ter uh, terrific uh, matchups for, yeah. for boxing, and you know, it was really kicked off by Mayweather McGregor, and now, you know, with that spot taking the momentum going into yeah. uh, let's run know, with into it the, into these fights yeah. and show folks some real competitive fights. You know what I mean? There, there won't be any carrying in these fights. But I guarantee between that. Between Superfly, those three <laughs> matchups on Superfly. Then uh, the week later, and these guys uh, are training. Coach has a theory that that Mayweather did not train a day for Conor McGregor. He might be <laughs> right with that, which is really sad. Um, I can guarantee you that Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez have trained their yeah, asses training. off for this Gennady. fight, and have had some of their best camps because Gennady is motivated. He's intense, and you see it because this is something he's wanted for so long. And with Canelo, he's not thinking about cutting that that. Yeah those last six to five pounds oh, that's right he's actually training at canelo, a more natural weight now to me canelo looks so much better at 100 well i haven't seen yeah. him at 160 at 164 he looked tremendous yeah. against uh, chavez but uh, i think junior. he's been a natural middleweight since last year squeezing down yeah. to 154 and he, he shouldn't have been doing that he yeah. shouldn't have been boiling down to 155 and 154 and now that he's over that mental hurdle it's like he can actually train at a healthy weight, and he'll be stronger on fight night. And then uh, Ryan Martin on on the uh, Triple G show, the uh, September sixteenth. Uh, he kicks Triple off G. the pay per view broadcast. First fight on the on pay per view. That's actually we we, we scheduled it an hour earlier, so the fight five. ends five o'clock. Five o'clock Pacific five time. Uh, Pacific time. Thank Specifically, you, Tom. so the East Coast fans can see the main event before midnight. You know that. that Thank should, you. Triple G and uh, Canelo should be in the ring. And by 11 o'clock, which I know the East Coast fans are going to appreciate. Yeah. Ryan Martin's in a tough fight. He's fighting Francisco Rojo from uh, from Mexico. WBC rated lightweight. Yeah, top 10 uh, WBC rated. He's uh, that's a big step up fight for uh, for Ryan. But you know he's got to take these type of fights if he's going to perform on that type of stage. You know he's got to take these uh, these challenging fights. And, yeah, and Joseph Diaz Jr. is on the card yep. against an unbeaten fighter, uh, Lara. What's Lara's first name? Jorge Lara? I think so. Yeah. He's a tough guy from Mexico. He's the guy he blasted out Fernando Montiel in one round. It's not Arislani Lara. No, no, no. no. no this guy's way more exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's, uh, what's the guy? Uh, Diego De La Hoya is right. fighting Randy yeah. Caballero. Yeah. And that's a fight I can't I, I can't pick. No, I don't know who wins. Two undefeated guys. Yeah. Pick yeah. So let me ask you, Tom. Yeah. 
How many pay-per-views do you think you're going to do for Triple G? But you know, we're we're always uh, uh, optimistic on on our promotions. We just do the best job we can to promote it, and uh, you know, hopefully the fans uh, will see you know the type of quality matchups we put together. So. And what know. what are you shooting for? What would you be happy with? What would you be happy with? We can put it this way: uh, Canelo did a million uh, against uh, Chavez Jr., and I think the Triple G fight should do much more than that. And Liam Smith too. Uh, no, they didn't do they, a million for Liam Smith. They did a lot though. They did like three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was in yeah. that range, yeah. Maybe uh, four hundred. Okay, I, retract, I retract that. But, but anyway, uh, I, I'll make a prediction. I'll make a, a pay-per-view prediction, yeah. and I know I'm, I know I know I'm right. Um, the no, the online pay-per-view uh, will break the record. Yes, that it could will be. break the online yeah, both English and Spanish. The online pay-per-view so for Canelo Golovkin on, uh, will smash the record. That's on the Ring TV, also, right? Yes. Yeah. So would you say two millions? Realistic. Look, you know, That's if I realistic. put out numbers and they don't hit a number right. or they okay. exceed well, a number, yeah. then, then I'll get the criticism. Okay, but I, I like when Doug makes a Okay, I'll like answer that. it for you. <laughs> okay, this is how I see it. Before the fight last week, I think it would have done maybe a million and a quarter. Now I I'm think there's a, a chance. A, a million and a half for yeah. sure and maybe two million. <laughs> there's so much more boxing awareness to the general public, to the general sports fan, the amount of publicity it got. And this fight's really a good fight. Canelo and Triple G are both big draws. It's I, I wouldn't be shocked if, if it did. Uh, if Triple G can break a million pay-per-view buys in his third pay-per-view, he did 150 against uh, Lemieux, he did 170 against Jacobs. Actually, a little yeah. more than 170, like yeah. just under 175 against Jacobs. And then uh, if he can break a million in his third fight, not actually, bad. Not too shabby. This time, a lot of folks haven't done time, that. He, it's the first time in his career where he's not fighting someone where he's carrying the, the promotion. Right. And so, you know, when both guys are able to bring their fan bases, I think that's really what they, and are at the top level of the sport of boxing. I think that's what the fans respond to. Absolutely. All right, Tom. All right. We're all excited, Tom. I gotta, I gotta We're so excited. We're all about ready to suffer heat stroke. <laughs> I was going to say, i got to get on the track before I start melting. Exactly. <laughs> well, you, actually, you don't have to run now, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> this was just I'm just going to walk yeah. a couple laps. I'm go. telling you, man. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming, Tom. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks, JP, for coming. Sure, yeah. Thank you, guys. JP, two weeks in a row. JP, Not right. bad, JP. It's a big month. We got a handicapper. Ready for this. I gotta be here. You know your shit, man. Yeah, All right, here. Tom. Uh, All right, Dougie. Wrap us up with this. How should everybody drive? Do you ever watch what uh, Dave and I say at the end of our periscopes? <laughs> drive like you just won the lottery. Exactly. How do you drive? Because you seem like the most even keeled, right, relaxed, I, mellow. I try to avoid the the speeding tickets. You can't drive fast in LA anyway. No. It's too much so traffic. I, I figured, you know, with all the traffic, you just to drive at a relaxed pace. And you try not to, to be distracted there. with your phone and all. You got a nice phone here. I know yeah, Bernie Barmazel is bugging you all the time. Sometimes right? uh, Bernie's texting me and, yeah. and I get distracted. But. Uh, no, but uh, I, I just, uh, you know, you got you to gotta stay focused on the road and uh, stay in your lane. Who, who had that shirt? Oh, that was your shirt from uh, Mr. Ball. Yeah, yeah. and it, Andre lane. Ward is fond of that, that saying as well. So, Did Mr. Ace? Ball autograph that shirt? For no, he didn't. I'm going to. Has he left? No, he's Next still, week. He's still I'll get him. <laughs> Good. I'll get him. All, All right, right, Tom. Thanks, thank you guys. so hey, much. Don't lot, miss Tom. September 9th, HBO Superfly, yeah. and uh, September 16th. Now with Triple G on HBO pay-per-view. I'll be seeing a lot of you this week and next. You know what was interesting about the